What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel, Katie of the House. I'm Katie and on today's video, I'm going to take you through my July 2022 budget wrap up. So let's just go ahead and get into it. We'll start with the income portion of our budget. So for our first paycheck, we budgeted $4,700. We actually brought in $4,906.20. So that was $206.20 more than we had expected. And this was just because my husband was on vacation on one of these weeks, and I wasn't sure exactly how much he was going to get because he hadn't been on vacation in a while. So I budgeted kind of on the lower end. So for his second paycheck, we budgeted $5,275, and he brought in $5,302, which was $27 more than we were expecting. On his third paycheck, we budgeted $4,700. We actually brought in $55.85.94, which was $885.94 more than we were expecting. So if you watched my July budget with me video, you'll know that I was thinking we might have extra income for July, but it wasn't set in stone yet, so I didn't budget for it. So basically, he was on vacation again for one of these weeks and he had signed up to work one of the days of his vacation. So if you work one of the days that you're off or on leave, they actually pay you for the leave, but then they actually pay you overtime for the time that you work, which I know is crazy, but that's how they do it. So he actually got paid more than his normal paychecks for working that. But at the time when I made this budget, I didn't know that he was going to get approved to work it because if they don't need help, they're not going to let you work. So um, they actually were shorthanded and very, very busy. So he got to work and made some extra money. So this is rollover from June. So this isn't technically income. We already had this money, but it was in our sinking funds from June. And those particular sinking funds were like groceries and car gas and household products. Um, they were turned into variable expenses because I think they should have been variable expenses to begin with. So I just took the balances that were in those sinking funds and I rolled them over to use for this month. So that was $97.64. This last portion of our income was a PayPal transfer. And it was actually from April that I had forgotten about because our PayPal account that we use is actually my husband's PayPal account. So I didn't realize that he had that money in there. So when I went to pay budget with crazy and love for her giveaway winnings, I used that PayPal account and I was like, oh, hey, we have like $241 in here. Um, so I went ahead and transferred that over to our regular bank account. So we were able to use it this month. So that was $240.41 extra. So our total for our income was... The budgeted income was $14,675, but we actually brought in $16,132.19, which was $1,457.19 more than we had expected. Next, we'll move on to the savings and investing category of our budget. So we had budgeted $750. We actually sent $875 to our emergency fund which was $125 more than we had budgeted. So we are trying to build up our emergency fund right now. It's not our number one goal. Our number one goal is our Capital One credit card, which is a debt. So we're trying to pay that off. But I did want to send a little bit extra to that emergency fund since we did bring in extra income. For E-Trade, we budgeted $150 and we actually sent $150. So that was exactly what we had planned. So total for savings and investing, we budgeted $900. We actually sent $1,025, which was $125 more than we had expected. Okay, next we'll move on to our debt payment categories. So our Capital One credit card, this is the debt that we are focusing on right now and trying to get paid off. The minimum payment is $84. We budgeted $2,750. But because we had extra income, we were able to send $3,250 to that credit card, which is very good. I'm so excited that we were able to send extra money to that credit card. I am a little bit frustrated with us, and you'll see why when we get to the sinking funds. With almost $1,500 of extra income, we should have sent more to this credit card. We spent a lot of money this month on things that we could have waited for and we should have waited for. But since we had extra money, I think in the back of my head, I was just kind of like, oh, it's fine. We have extra money this month. We can go a little bit over. But really, we should have sent a lot more to this credit card. 
Next is our family car. So the minimum payment is 600. We budgeted 600 and we sent 600. So for my husband's student loans, we sent $100 to the smallest student loan. And that is all we sent this month to student loans since they are still on a payment pause. So next is our fixed expenses. So we'll start here with our mortgage. We spent $2,253, which was exactly what we thought we would spend. For our phones, we spent $111, which was $19 more than we had expected. So our bill did go up due to inflation. And we also had an overage fee because I turned my Wi-Fi off one time when I was not in Wi-Fi to get better service. And when I got back in Wi-Fi, I forgot to turn it back on. So I did get charged an overage fee for using too much data. Internet was $81 which is what we thought. Other was $406, which was $6 more than we had expected. Trash was $42, which was $1 more than we had expected. Again, we got charged a little bit more due to inflation. And then streaming was $100, and that is exactly what we expected. So our total budgeted for fixed expenses was $2,967. We actually spent $2,993 which was $26 more than we had expected. So not too big of a deal. We were able to cover this with our extra income. Next is variable expenses. So for utilities, I made a mistake. I clumped in our electric, gas, and water and called it all utilities, which is fine, except I forgot to add in the water when I calculated the amount that we would need. So I only budgeted 375, but we actually spent 430.42 which was $55.42 more than I had budgeted for. So for groceries, we budgeted $1,200. I actually spent $1,198.39, which was $1.61 less than I had budgeted for. So this is our second month in a row staying under $1,200 for groceries. So I'm really excited about that. So I do realize that $1,200 for groceries is a lot of money, especially since we don't include like, you know, household products in our grocery budget. But it's an improvement for us, and I'm just comparing me to me, and we're doing so much better than we used to on grocery spending. So I'm going to call that a win. For eating out, we budgeted $235. We spent $255.47, which was $20.47 more than we had budgeted for. For household products, we budgeted $225. We spent $267.52, which was $42.52 more than we had budgeted for. So every time I talk about household products, my mom will text me and say, Katie, you need to buy your like soaps and cleaning products at the Dollar Tree because you'll save a lot of money if you do so. And she's probably right. I probably could save some money if I bought more things from the Dollar Tree. But this isn't just used for cleaning products and like bath soaps and stuff. We also buy our vitamins with this fund. So I did buy a lot of vitamins this month because they were on sale at Costco. And then my husband's supplements for like working out, like creatine and like amino acids and stuff. I use this um, this line in the budget to cover those things. So that's part of what this is for too. And I do, you know, also buy like cleaning products and stuff out of this fund as well. So I just wanted to explain that a little bit. For car gas, I budgeted 325, but we only spent 270 91. So we were actually $54.09 under budget for this category, which is awesome, especially with gas prices being crazy like they are. But we just not had to drive a lot over the summer. For our Costco membership, um, that's due once a year. It was $120, which is what we were expecting. And then for ASCP renewal, this is just for my job. So I'm a medical laboratory scientist. I'm not actually working at the moment. But I do want to keep my certification up if I ever do need to go back to work. So I have to do continuing education and then I have to pay a $95 fee every three years. So it was due this year and that was $95. So total budgeted for our variable expenses was $2,575. We actually spent $2,637.71 which was $62.71 over budget. So again, that's not great. We were over budget again, but we did make extra income. So it was okay. We didn't have to charge every anything, which is honestly the ultimate goal is to not have to charge anything. Okay, now we're gonna get into our sinking fund category. So this is the part of the budget I'm a little frustrated with. So again, I don't wanna sound like I'm ungrateful for the amount of money we made because I'm not. I know we made a lot of money this month and I'm very thankful for that. 
I just wish we would have sent more of it to debt and less to sinking funds. Not that I mind sending money to sinking funds. I do actually love sending money to sinking funds. But we had to, we had to send more money to sinking funds because we spent too much out of our sinking funds. So that's why I'm a little frustrated with us this month. You know, I don't want to show you guys that I made almost $1,500 of extra income and I only sent $500 extra to debt when I tell you that debt payoff is my goal. Like, I feel like I need to explain myself. So yeah, we overspent this month. And I think part of it, like I said, was, you know, in the back of my head, I knew by the middle of the month, oh, we're going to have extra income. So I like justified it like, oh, it's okay that we're spending extra because we have extra income. When in reality, we could have just used exactly what we had budgeted and then had all of that extra money to send to debt. So I'm a little annoyed at us, but honestly, it's okay. Everything turned out fine. We didn't have to charge anything, and we did make a big dent on our debt payoff this month. So overall, it was actually really good, and I can't complain. So for school... This is our first sinking fund. So this is to pay for my kids' hybrid program tuition and anything that they need that goes along with school. So like uniforms, curriculum, you know, school supplies, anything like that comes out of this fund. So we started this fund with $5,451.18. I budgeted $1,800. I sent $1,800 and we spent $6,774.03. So we ended this fund with $477.15. So the reason that we spent so much on this fund is because the tuition was due in July. So I'm not mad about this at all. We totally plan to spend that much money. And I'm actually really happy that we had extra left over. So for house maintenance, we started with $155.22. I budgeted $450. I actually ended up sending $550 though, because we spent $666. So we ended this fund with $39.22. So we did redo Liam's room with this money. So I made a video about that. I'll link it above. So I did go over a little bit on that. And then at the end of the month, we had the company who sprays for our weeds come. And I completely forgot that they were supposed to come. So I didn't save enough money out of Liam's room makeover to set aside for that. So I had to go a little bit over or I had to send extra money basically to this fund. So I don't really believe in having negative sinking funds. Like if a, if a fund goes negative, that money has to come from somewhere. So basically it came from our extra income. So for holidays and gifts, we started with $5.58. I budgeted $3.85. I sent $4.25 and we spent $427.43, which left us with $3.15. So my youngest son, Owen, did have a birthday this month. And then we had a friend who had a birthday that I wasn't really prepared for. So that's why we went a little bit over this month. For car maintenance and insurance, we started with $389. I budgeted $300. I sent $300 and I spent $16. So this was just a car wash. So we ended this fund with $584.89. Next is my husband's spending. So he started with 14 cents in his account. We budgeted $400, which was already more than he usually spends because he had told me like he wanted to buy something. And I was actually glad that he had like planned for it ahead of time so that I could plan in my budget for it ahead of time. And I was like, you know what? It's a three paycheck month. You can have some extra money. So we budgeted $400, but I actually had to send $727 because he spent $727.14, which left him with $0 in this account. So I'm not going to get into this too too much. You know, obviously it's frustrating when any of us overspends, but, you know, I'm not mad at him or anything because I've overspent in the past too. So it's not, you know, I'm not, it's not ideal, but I'm not like angry about it or anything. Like it is what it is. At least we made extra income. Yes, I would have liked to send that extra $327 to debt, but at least we had it and we didn't charge anything. So that's great. Okay, for my spending, I started with $37.48. I budgeted $325. I sent myself $325 and I spent $248.89. So I ended with $113.59. For my boys' spending, they started with $1.44. I budgeted $100. We actually spent, or we actually sent $266 because I spent 
$251.52. So this was higher because I mentioned in my August budget with me video that Liam was starting a new like ninja class where he does like obstacles and stuff. And we did a free trial in July, but it was like the second to last week in July. And I knew that like they paid tuition at the beginning of the month. So I just assumed that we would skip the last month of July and that we would start in August, but that actually wasn't the case. So we actually went to the class the last week of July and we had to pay like $22 just for the week. They didn't make us pay for the whole month, but then I also had to buy his uniform that he'll be using for the rest of the time he's there. So that's why this was a little bit more expensive than I thought it was going to be. So we ended this fund with $15.82. So for entertainment, we started this fund with $179.85. I budgeted $200. I sent $236 and we spent $405.67, which is a lot for entertainment. And I realized that. So my husband was on vacation a week in July and we were planning on going to the zoo. Um, we actually ended up not going to the zoo because we looked at the weather on the day that we were supposed to go and it was just going to be like scorching hot and miserable. So we decided to go to medi medieval times instead. So most of this money was spent at medieval times for the tickets. And then we bought each of the boys like a little souvenir when we were there. But that actually didn't put us over budget. We would have been under budget if that was all we did. But then at the end of the month, one of our friends invited us to go to this like aquatic center. So it's like a big pool with like slides and stuff. Um, and it was like seven or $8 per person for that. And we agreed to go and I had enough money to pay for all of us to get into that pool, but it ended up raining the day that we were supposed to go. So we changed our plans and we went to like a trampoline place instead. So the boys could jump on the trampoline and me and the other mom ended up jumping too. So that ended up being a lot more expensive than the pool would have been. So that's what put us over budget. So we ended this fund with $10.18 after I had to add extra money to the fund. So for clothing, we started with $8.96. I budgeted $200. I actually sent $210. We spent $207.96. So we ended this fund with $11. So you'll see here that I added $10 and we ended with $11. So we actually would not have been over budget on this. We would have had $1 left. But after I did everything in the budget that we had already spent, I had like 80 something dollars left and I just went through all of our sinking funds and added a little bit money, a little bit of extra money to each of the funds that was low, except for Mark's spending. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's why that has $11 in it. For pet expenses, we started with $3.30. I budgeted $500. I actually sent $560 and then we spent $562.99. So we ended this fund with $31. So this is one of the other funds that's a little bit frustrating for me. So yes, we did have a big vet bill this month, but we also bought cat food and dog food. And then we bought cat toys, which we could have waited on. We didn't need to buy. And then we bought some water bowls that again, we could have waited on and we didn't need to buy this month. So that's one of the things that I'm a little frustrated about. Like we could have you know, use that extra $60 that I spent or that I sent to this fund for debt instead of using it for sinking funds. But it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> if I keep telling myself it's fine, it'll be fine. So for YouTube, I started this with $88.44. I budgeted $75. I actually sp uh, sent $79.48 just because, again, I had a few extra dollars left over. I was not over budget in this category. I just sent extra to it. So I spent $122.74. So I ended this fund with $45.18. So I did have several giveaways come out this month. So that's why this was $122. So for unexpected and buffer, I started with $32.27. I budgeted $48. I sent $48 and we spent $41.48. And we ended this fund with $38.79. So this $41.48, half of it was lottery tickets that my husband wanted to buy. I do not like buying a lottery tickets because to me, it's just like throwing away money, but he wanted to buy them. So I'm like, okay, why not? We have a little bit of money there. You can use it. And then I forget what the other thing we spent, we bought was, but 
it was another unexpected item. So we spent like 20 on lottery tickets and then the rest was something else. So our actual income was $16,132.19. Our actual expenses was $16,132.19, which is a balance of zero, which means we assigned a place for every single dollar that came in. All right, here, this is just a breakdown of the percentage of our income that went to each category in our budget. And if you watched my August budget with me, those percentages were off because when I make my um, spreadsheet for each month, I just copy it from the month before and then I change all the numbers, but I didn't change the numbers for the chart. I forgot. So it was reflecting like July's budget percentages, not August. So if you watch my August video and you're like, man, this girl doesn't know how to do percentages. Yeah, I do know how to do them. I just didn't do them. So sorry about that. But these should be correct. I did check them. So we sent 6% of our income to savings and investing. We sent 25% to debt, which is awesome. Again, I can't be mad about that. Like I can be a little bit frustrated that we didn't send more, but that's honestly awesome. It's okay. For fixed expenses, we sent 19% of our income. And for variable expenses, we sent 16% of our income. 34% of our income went to sinking funds. So overall, not a bad month. I'm very, very happy. Our goal every month is to not take on any more debt. That's our number one goal every month. Yes, we like to send as much money as possible to debt. And no, we didn't do that this month. We could have sent more money to debt if we didn't spend so much. So while we have some negatives in this budget, overall, it was a very positive. And if we're making progress on our debt payments, that is always, always a win. So look out for my debt update. I'm going to do a debt update soon so you can see what our balances are now after making this big payment this month. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.